Hi folks, Canadian Prepper here. So today I want to do a more in-depth review of the Monowalker. And so I'm going to be going over all the specs. I'm going to be showing you some close-ups. And there have been some upgrades made uh, since this prototype unit was produced. So I'm going to be going over a lot of those as well. So let's get to it. Before I do that though, I want to address something that I've seen in the comments on the original video about the Monowalker fat meat that I did. Basically, it amounted to people saying, well, you know, I could make that. And I'm sure a person could make something like Survival Tech Nord made a hiking trailer. But even he would agree that in order to build a unit like this, which was totally dialed in in every possible way, it takes a lot of planning and a lot of these parts come from different countries. And it's kind of like going to a premium knife manufacturer and saying, well, I could just forge that, you know, on the weekend, you know, disregarding the years of research that has to go into making something like this, the harness system, like all the ergonomics of it. Yeah, you could make a hiking trailer. Is it going to be like this? Absolutely not. You know, you can make, uh, you could forge yourself a knife, but it's not going to be a a heli quality knife or whatever quality manufacturer there is out there that you want to compare yourself to you know you could do it but it's not going to be this good and if you have the time the hundreds of hours to invest in making something and backward engineering something like this then by all means do that but then you have to ask yourself well how much is my time worth and in terms of the price point yes it's right now it's over a thousand dollars Canadian and US but you also have to think about how much money people spend on cameras you know how much money do people spend on scopes uh, on certain firearms you could spend a thousand dollars on a lot worse than this you know uh, this is something which is going to serve a lot of different functions especially for preppers and survivalists as I'm going to talk about so I got the disc brake activated so I can easily manipulate the mono walker in a still position and just to show you the uh, buckle systems here, these are actually going to be different. I'm going to show you a diagram of uh, what he's going to do for the final product. It's a bit more simple than this design. This is all uh, aircraft anodized aluminum, as they call it. And these things are going to be able to come out if you wanted to, you know, augment the design in any way. You can put a box on there. The type of box you put on you know, is going to obviously increase the weight a bit. So I think uh, the Ortley bag that's provided with the Monowalker is probably your best setup. It is waterproof as well. It's probably not the most, you know, rugged as like a Pelican box, but that's going to add probably another 20 pounds minimum. So, you know, that's going to limit the amount of stuff you're going to be able to carry, putting so much strain on the uh, suspension there. So... You got these uh, rods, which kind of act as the base for the bag, and you can take them off. They easily unscrew with the hex key there, and they'll come out. So pretty straightforward. So this base is going to be extended a bit just to prevent any sort of contact with the bag and the tire, because sometimes when you're on a steep slope or something, the bag can start to sink a bit, so that's just another improvement that's coming to the design. Now this part of the monowalker here, you can see the handlebars are bracketed onto the chassis with this really awkward <laughs> sort of a bracket system there. And it's, it's good, it works, but uh, there is a lot of strain that gets put on there. And I'll show you what I mean. And okay, so one thing I noticed when I was, and there's no, there's barely any weight in here right now, but when you have 80 to 100 pounds in this bag, you're going to be putting a lot of strain on these bolts that are in this bracket because basically there's nothing in here. There's nothing underneath there supporting it. So all the weight is right on this junction, this joint right here between the handlebars and the main chassis. So uh, I proposed some sort of kickstand system to take the strain off of this bracket. So the handlebar system is very straightforward. So you just undo that latch quick release. 
And these are gonna be made of the same kind of aluminum. Right now it's made of wood, which I'm pretty sure adds a little bit of weight. So there, it's gonna be just one piece of aluminum in the final product. So that's gonna be pretty cool. And these screw right on there. So very easy to uh, deal with this side of the device when you're converting it to a backpack. So I just want to give you a quick overview of the tire system and the disc brake. So basically you have a, a axle which is easy to remove, it has a quick release thing on there. The next axle in the actual finalized version is going to be modular because this can transform into a bike trailer and in order to do that you need that modular axle on there. The disc brake system is great. I haven't there hasn't been any bending or anything like that. I haven't noticed any warping of this tire. It'd be very hard to warp this tire because it is so fat. Uh, the tire itself uh, appears to be, you know, fairly rugged. Uh, it's inflated to 20 PSI right now. And I, I left a little bit of softness in there, not too much. But um, yeah, just a high quality tire. So for all you people who think that you can just build something like this, I'd like to see where you would find a tire like this. I know you could get a fat bike tire but that's going to be significantly larger than this so finding the tire that's this size uh, that's the perfect size for the payload and and working with the physics of the mono walker is very challenging in itself now these two arms here can come off and that's going to be able to allow you to transform it into a backpack the disc brake setup takes two seconds to undo i'll show you that in a bit so the brake line comes along here, goes underneath the mono walker chassis there, and it goes right up to the handles where you would control it. And there's a screw here, easily unscrew that for a quick disassembly to convert it into a backpack or a biking trailer. So the harness system is very sophisticated in its own right. It has a very sturdy hip belt, which is reinforced with this polycarbonate plastic back here which isn't going anywhere, it's not breaking, and it's bolted in there to the uh, shoulder straps, so you know that's not going anywhere. It's got these very fancy carabiners, which are quickly disengaging from the unit, is not gonna be a huge issue, just because that's all you pretty much have to do. So you, you would do that on both sides, I'll demonstrate that in a minute. And uh, the shoulder pads are fairly thick, they're not really too thick. Like, I mean, they are, they got a bit of girth to them, as you can see there, but they're probably not the thickest ones I've seen. But that's okay because you're not bearing a lot of the weight on your shoulders. Remember, most of the weight is going on your hips. Now, the interesting thing about this hip belt, and I would say as a rebuttal to those who think that they could just make the Mono Walker, is its ability to transform into a backpacking system. So, at once, you can use this harness not only to pull the mono walker, you could use this harness to pull a sled. You know, it's very versatile in that respect. So there's other things that you can pull aside to just the mono walker. So you're getting a very sturdy harness with it, uh, in addition to just the mono walker compatibility itself. But the unique thing is its ability to transform and bear the weight of all the cargo that you would carry in the mono walker. So this is tested to be able to hold well over 100 pounds of gear with the external frame, which of course the Mono Walker converts into, and whatever sort of uh, gear that's in the Ortley bag, which of course will be strapped to the uh, Mono Walker external frame, which I'll demonstrate in a minute. These things here ba bear the weight of 23 kilonewtons, so that's that's way more than you're ever going to be able to carry in the Mono Walker. So uh, these are made in Italy. What else can I say about the hip belt? It feels good. You know, it doesn't feel, I didn't at all feel uncomfortable with it. And I'm used to wearing an Osprey backpack, which is arguably one of the most comfortable backpacks uh, or backpack manufacturers, the most ergonomic backpacks you can buy next to uh, Arc'teryx or something like that. So I'm used to comfort and this I can tell you is very comfortable. So the harness system is fairly straightforward. So these two clips, are going to be what clip onto the mono walker. I'll just demonstrate that here. So the mono walker does have that quick release option. So if you were on a slope or you know you had to get away or ditch your gear, you're getting chased by a grizzly bear or something like that, quickly had to get away, you quickly go like this 
and that will disengage you from the unit. Now the Ortley bag is kind of unique in its own right. It's a big waterproof duffel bag basically which I think it's about 130 liters or something like that. Something crazy amount of space that you get in here. Lots of real estate and versatile as well because of course this in itself converts to a backpack. So even if you're mono walker and the off chance that it failed or just to provide you with a bit more options in terms of navigating precarious terrain, you could easily sling this on your back. Uh, I mean, you could sling it over your shoulder, of course. You know, there's a lot of different ways you can carry a duffel bag. It even has these two loops here, so you can carry it like that. It's got a very, the zipper in this thing is unreal. They give you a special kind of lube for the zipper. You can use WD-40, but it's just a very solid zipper. I don't know if they call it a YKK, but uh, it's it really is better than that. And it is a waterproof zipper. It's got these nice zipper pulls here. Very sturdy, very rugged build, excellent bag, and perfectly compatible with the monowalker. It's right on there. So, and it would be great for, uh, because it's just one big compartment, it would be great for hauling game. You know, if you had to, uh, if you're using it for hunting and you wanted to carry out some meat or something like that, you know, it'd be great for that. Uh, it's great for carrying wood, you know, water, just because it's just that one pocket. It's not over compartmentalized or anything like that. So uh, I think it's good. It would be nice to have some inserts maybe to compartmentalize it further, but that's all something that, you know, uh, you could do as a DIY project if you wanted to. I only show this gun for demonstration purposes. It's a Mossberg Maverick 88, which is modified with an ATI stock. And I just wanted to show you that you can actually fit a shotgun in here. It will fit in the bag. A uh, longer gun, obviously, it's not going to fit, but you could still strap it to the outside. Now, I think what would be cool would be to have some sort of gun mount system running up on the side here, where like a gun rack almost. I think that would be pretty kick-ass. That might be a future project that I'll look into. Uh, as using this for some sort of I'm never coming home bag or bug out bag or something to that effect. I think that would be awesome. And you got to think like, you know, especially for survivalist preppers, you militia guys, imagine how much guns and ammo you could haul with this thing. You know, in The Walking Dead, when uh, Rick, in the, I think it was the first episode ever, Rick uh, just slings that huge backpack full of guns over his shoulder and gets on the horse I mean, you know, in doing that, you know how hard that would actually be to carry all those guns and ammunition. That's a lot of weight. That was probably easily 70, 80 pounds. So with this, you can carry a lot of ammunition. So it may have battlefield applications as well. Hopefully we never see a battlefield in our lifetime. You're going to want to try to keep your gear bilaterally symmetric. So same amount of weight distribution on each side just to help with the balance factor. Because uh, when you're when you get this thing loaded up and you're walking with it, you may be sort of shimmying to one side or another, depending on how you have it loaded. So you want to, to the best of your ability, distribute the weight half and half, and that's going to just make for easy coasting. This is just a tool bag that I keep with it. So I got my air pump in there. I have a patch kit, a little mini socket. And I don't have the gator grip socket in there. That would kind of be nice, actually. I just thought about that. But uh, I do have some hex keys and some various lubricants that I can use uh, to maintain the fat mate. So it's good to have one of these if you're going to get uh, a mono walker. And the thing with these, I got these from Mountain Equipment Co-op Canada. These side pockets work really well. You can use them like that. Right now, this one kind of sways into me, so I don't really like that. But if it could be stationary like that, I think it's great because it's out of the way. It's not where you're really grabbing it unless you're going uphill. Then I find you grab back here a little bit more. But otherwise, you know, for the most part, you're going to be grabbing here or up here. So you could have those side pockets for quick access to various things. If you want gear quickly on the fly, that's one of the problems with the monowalker right now is that you have to take it off 
get your stuff, untake your backpack, whatever. But if you had that tack vest or chest rig or side pockets or something to that effect, uh, it would be great for getting those quick access to those things that you need right away. All right, so these are all the components of the mono walker when it's taken apart. So you have the Ortley bag over there. You have the what will be the external hiking pack frame, which is also the main chassis. You have the two arm bars, which connects the tire to the chassis. Then you have the uh, handles. You have that little axle pin there. Um, that is just a toolkit that I made. And of course, you have the harness system. So that's pretty much it. And of course, the tire up there. I can't forget about that. Sometimes uh, you can mount that to the outside. Today, I'm going to see if I can't fit it inside the bag because I'm not carrying a lot of gear today. So we'll see what happens. So now I got the Ortley bag all packed up. I got a lot of gear in there. So this definitely weighs quite a bit. Probably pushing 60 pounds maybe. So pretty much easy from here. The bottom one I'm not so worried about, but I might loop this through here. Usually I do something like that just to kind of give it an extra protection, but you don't need to do that. Cinches down pretty hard, and I'll usually go through these loops. Just, you know, a little extra protection. Cinch that down evenly so that the buckle's right over the zipper. Okay, so there it is. And uh, here is the mono walker packed up into its backpack configuration. I realized that I missed a Velcro loop, this one here, which is pretty important. Otherwise, it's bouncing all over. So that one wraps around there. So you have four points of contact. And uh, that's going to be secure. Get under it. A little awkward to get going, but once you're up, you're up. Now it's just going to be a matter of how strong are you. Chest strap. We're good to go. So the first thing you're going to notice about the mono walker in its backpack form is just how high it rides. Probably got at least good foot over my head there. So it's going to limit your ability to kind of get underneath stuff. So uh, that's a problem. But you got to keep in mind too that this is the configuration that you're going to only have it in maybe 10% of the time, if that. You know, I've, this is actually the first time I've hiked with it as a backpack in the woods because I've never needed to do it before because typically you can get through any terrain with that big fat wheel that you need to albeit a little slow at times but for the most part it's doable so I mean this is this would be for some extreme bouldering perhaps which there would be no way that you could take the tire over uh, maybe the odd river crossing but even then uh, with the waterproof Ortley bag and, you know, just the one foot of clearance that you have, that should be enough to do it, you know, to get through any sort of uh, river crossing. You may want to just put the Ortley bag on, like on your back, and uh, in conjunction with the mono walker or walk them over one at a time or something like that, it's doable. Uh, one place where the mono walker could use improvement is between the back uh, back external frame here. It can use some padding back there because it can be a little rough. Now, I'm in pretty good physical condition. You know, I'm not trying to brag or anything, but you know, carrying 70 pounds or whatever this is right now is not really a big deal for me. But 
for somebody who perhaps wasn't in good physical condition, having a little extra padding back there wouldn't hurt just to give them that extra bit of support. So let's go for a walk and see how she rides. so I just finished about half a kilometer of backwoods hiking with this 70 pound thingamajigger on me and I'm glad that I don't have to use it that often because it's, it's doable it works it's gonna carry the load but it's not that comfortable so but it's gonna get what it needs to do done you know it serves its purpose which is to portage over that more challenging terrain so with that said, on that note, I look forward to all the comments and questions, if any. Thanks for watching. Canadian Prepper out. Check out the Canadian Preppers Network blog, an excellent resource for survivalists and preppers.